in this video i will go over the homework uh following the lecture 0 0.35 called continuity at a point and just to summarize the lecture real quick uh in that lecture we talk about the continuity at a point defined as when the limit of a function is equal to the output of the function at the target value that's when the function is continuous and when it's not continuous it is discontinuous and there are three types of discontinuity one is removable meaning when the limit of the function exists but is not equal to the output of the function at the target value we also have jump discontinuity that happens when the limit of the function the left-sided limit and the right-sided limit exist are finite but do not coincide and we also have essential discontinuity which occurs when the limit of f of x as x approaches to the left or the right um, is equal to plus or minus um, infinity so this is like a brief summary of the lecture and let's jump right into the homework And my computer is a bit slow. Well, it's loading, I guess we can, I can draw uh, some of these discontinuities. Removable discontinuity always looks like you have a continuous line and then there is a hole um, jump discontinuity looks like you have a line but then it stops and then continues uh, from a different level and essential discontinuity is when you pretty much have a vertical asymptote That's how we can visually identify it, identify some of these discontinuities. Um, but let's see what the homework has for us. And the homework has exactly um, that. We have a graph of a function, and let's find out. Well, the question doesn't ask us about the types of discontinuities, but it it is asking us to identify the intervals of continuity, which is continuity is when the function is not discontinuous so here we have continuity so first of all we're going to have three intervals so we're going to have two unions and we're going to have the first interval from uh, negative infinity negative infinity it could be a pain in the butt to actually write all this infinity so we have from negative infinity to negative six then we have a union from negative six to three and then we have a union from three to infinity Uh, it says use a comma so should have paid attention to that i use the set union notation
Interesting. So I think we also have to pay attention to the continuity, like uh, directional continuity. So function can be continuous from the left, from the right. So which I ignored. Uh, but here we can see that since this, the left end of this function belongs to this um, P is, we would say it's continuous from the left. But lesson learned. We'll try again next time. Um, which of the following statements are true? So f of x is not continuous at x equals 3. That is true. Because it's defined, it's not defined at x equals three. That is not true. So uh, it is defined at x equals three. F of three exists, but f of x is not continuous because limit doesn't exist. That's not true because limit does exist. F of three and the limit both exist, but f of x is not continuous because limit. This is true, and this is the definition of removable discontinuity as I showed you here on this side. So we answered that question. This is actually a fun problem, and um, when it shows up on a test or a quiz, um, students usually overthink it. And uh, however, you are going to do this problem. Let me show you the like intelligent approach with technology. Uh, we have a piecewise function, and let's define a piecewise function in Desmos. And I frequently forget how to define a piecewise function in Desmos. Let me try. Does this work? Yeah. So in Desmos, we define a piecewise function uh, by defining it on multiple intervals. So in this case, I'm going to define this function Is it going? It doesn't like it. Should I put comma here? Yeah. So you see, so I define this function to be that rational expression when x is less than 4, when x is greater than 4, and when x is 4, I'm going to define the function to be equal to k according to this uh, formula. Now I'm going to add the slider k, and let's see what we have here. What we have here is... Uh, what we have here is the... And it's hard to see, so let me also plot this point uh, for comma k. Uh, let me also choose color blue for it. And now, as I'm, as I'm, as I'm changing k, do you see how the output of the function at 4 changes. And uh, um, if we look at the question, what's the question asking us? The question is saying, find the values for, for which uh, the function is continuous. Well, visually it's very easy to understand the question. It says, for which values of k the function is continuous? Well, which way should I slide it up or down to connect the, the two pieces? Well, I should slide it up. And you realize that at some point, that um, dot will plug the hole in the graph. And now if you just look at the value of k, it's 7. So to answer this question, 7 is the answer. Now, if you want to do this question um, analytically, and if you do, that's good. Um, if we want to do this question analytically, remember, in order for this function to be continuous, the limit of f of x as x approaches to 4 has to be equal to f of 4. f of 4 is given to be k, but the limit of f of x as x approaches to 4 is the same as the limit of this function because this is how this... Um, original function is defined. So if you want to do it analytically, this is your question. The question is, what is the limit of this rational function as x approaches to 4? And again, 
analytically, we can answer this question by um, factoring out x minus 4 from the numerator. And the answer is 7, which we already knew. So these problems may look intimidating and hard, but they're not really hard once you understand uh, what's going on. All right, so uh, for this one, I'm going to graph it. You know what? I don't have time for uh, doing this by hand, so I'm just going to utilize this template for piecewise function. So we have square root of 2x plus 1. Uh, as x approaches to negative one half and four, and as x is greater than four, we have five x squared minus five x minus fifty seven. That's a large number, um, but it's a large number. But if you look at this graph. Does it look like there is a discontinuity there? Doesn't, right? So it looks like uh, the two pieces of a piecewise function connect. So there is no discontinuity there. And therefore, f of x is continuous. Would be my guess. Educated guess in this case. Let's identify discontinuities, right? We have discontinuity at 0, this is removable. We have discontinuity at 3, this is essential. And I don't think we have any jump discontinuities. So, essential discontinuity is also known as infinite discontinuity. And this is the only correct answer. Uh, to see what's going on with this one, I'm just going to graph it. And it looks like a straight line. And that's because we have a, this is a well-known rational function. We definitely know how to analyze rational functions. This one looks like a straight line because it has a removable discontinuity at 4. So that's, that's what it looks like. So the first option is the right one. But again, if you want to do it analytically, it's a little bit more involved. But we're not trying to do these questions analytically. So for this one, I'm going to use this template that I had earlier. Minus 2 thirds 1, 3x plus 2. And for x greater than 1, we have 3x squared plus 3x minus 6 plus square root of 5. And what do we see? We also see that it connects at 1. Pretty cool, right? So, looks like f of x is continuous at x equals 1. Just entering the piecewise function. And again, it looks like it's also continuous. So uh, f of x is continuous at x equals 1. Okay. 
feel like I've seen this problem before. I don't know why they said we completed an objective, but keep giving us a similar problem. So this function also looks like a straight line, and that's because we have a remo removable discontinuity at x equals negative 3. So it's right over here. Right here, you saw it, right? Uh, but the limit does exist, so... I have a feeling that this one is also a removable discontinuity. Ooh, no, this one's not. Uh, that was a surprise, right? So what's going on here at x equals 4? At x equals 4, we have a vertical um, asymptote. And therefore, we have what's called essential or infinite discontinuity. Uh, this is just basically to practice the uh, piecewise defined function in Desmos. So for x being less than negative 2, we have 6x plus 1 for x being between 2, negative 2 and 4 we have 5x minus 1 and for x being greater than or equal to 4 we have negative 6x squared plus 115 and it looks like Looks like it's a continuous function. It's pretty cool when you're allowed to use technology and you know exactly what to do. Um, and in calculus too, it's okay to use technology for pre-calculus. It's really not a big deal. Nobody wants to spend time doing limits and uh, um, solving equations by hand at this point. Uh, intervals for functional below screen. Aha, uh -huh. we've made we. I've made the mistake before um, writing this as sets and not counting the points. So from minus infinity to 3. 3 is not included, right? So we're going to leave it uh, as a parenthesis and from 3 to infinity. So this should be the right one. And we completed this homework. Yay! If you have any questions, feel uh, free to reach out.